hey lovely people this is me now <laughs> after three and a half weeks in mexico my hair catawampus um yeah <laughs> it is what it is i'm heading home in a few days heading back to oregon um and it's been quite an adventure i came here i don't know how much i've talked about it on this channel but i came here uh because i have literally one month off for the next two years in the middle of this program i'm i'm doing on uh to get my master's in clinical mental health counseling you know just add like an extra set of tools for the the esther toolbox so uh in a year and a half i will be a, a professional counselor right now i'm just whatever it is I am, uh, a spiritual director, a chaplain, a uh, tarot, tarot, whatever. <laughs> I am what I am. But anyway, so I have like this month off and uh, uh, neither my husband nor I are retired, um, but we both are tired. <laughs> so we needed, we needed some time and we needed, as it turns out, some sun, which we've gotten a lot of. So I wanted to, before I leave Mexico, um, I wanted to talk a little bit more about the Wheel of Life spread. So I'm, I'm recording this on January 10th. Um, apologies for all of the background noise. I'm, I'm recording this outside in a courtyard uh, where I've been, been staying, uh, at the, a little, the little apartment that I've been staying at. Um, so, uh, yeah, I want to say more about the Wheel of Life. If you participated in the Drop in 78 Challenge, which happens every year from October 15th through December 31st, going through uh, a, a particular tarot deck, you choose your tarot deck and you go through it one card at a time, one day at a time. If you did that challenge, then it culminates on uh, New Year's Eve with uh, the final card, the world, and then moving right into pulling a wheel of life spread. So I've spoken about the Wheel of Life spread a bunch of times. I just wanted to clarify though, the nature of the hub card in the Wheel of Life. So, you know, here's the thing about Mindful Tarot. Mindful Tarot gives us a pathway into the horizon of our future, not by trying to forecast events, not by trying to change what's here, but instead by giving us the fullest possible picture of what is this present moment right here right now to help us become ever more mindful of this life that we are in the middle of living right here and now and life is full of change and movement continually that's what it is to be alive and it, well that's what it is to be dead too i mean this is what is movement exchange transformation endless transformation so the question is how do we those of us with big old brains like us humans, how do we uh, consciously transform our lives? You know, I have been working for a number of years on becoming uh, more open-hearted, more willing to be vulnerable, more capable of allowing myself to settle into the world around me without defenses. My mantra has been the undefended heart. That's That's been the, the, the the goal of my spiritual work now for I don't even know how long um, and how do I do that how do I embrace that goal how do I become more and more open it's not by taking the parts of me that are closed and going you know if you can picture the um, Rider Waite Smith strength card uh, or the Marseille uh, force card that it is uh, a forza, that it is uh, riffing on, uh, that it is elaborating on. You know, the way that we relate to that beast inside us, that beast that we also are, is not to pry the jaws open or not to push the jaws closed, but to allow our delicate fingers to hold that which is challenging, right? To allow the delicacy of our hearts and our bodies and our minds to meet face to face, hand to hand, grip to grip, I don't even know how to say it, with what challenges us in our own lives and in the world that we inhabit. Change comes from being present. So, the wheel of life, which takes the form of 12 cards that are positioned according to the months of the year, January through December, and then a central card, the wheel of life 
differs from other wheel, wheels of the year spread or year ahead spread by not presuming that each of the cards specifically forecasts or gives the theme for a given month alone, but instead by trying to give us at a, in a fractal way a picture of this moment in time as, it's, as it expands outward into the coming chunk of time, the coming year. One thing that I've discovered in my own work with the Wheel of Life spread is that the, uh, my landlord just walked by. Um, one thing that I've discovered in my own life with the Wheel of Life spread is that the, uh, uh, the months may be a little bit out of sync. This was most true for me, most dramatically true for me back in 2017 when I believe it was 2017, I have to check, and I'll, I'll, I'll drop the image of that wheel uh, in, in this video. Um, when my June card was the tower, and I was incredibly um, anguished about that. It really it was my tower month. I posted a bunch of videos on the tower, exploring each day of that month, so 30, 30 postings on my YouTube channel, and I'll, I'll post the, the link below my tower month, like each day leaning into what that card might mean. The deepest meaning of that card came forward for me in July, which was in fact a month that had some tremendous, uh, tremendous tumult and challenge. And what I realized is that the tarot speaks to what is unfolding in our life uh, in ways that can seem to be incredibly synchronicitous, like, oh my God, this really is what's happening right now and sometimes in ways that can seem a little bit off kilter. But in any event, what we discover is that the broad swath of a moment of our life is filled with moving pieces and that the tarot, even we kind of, mm, you set it up with specific past, present, future, January, February, March, April, when we, when we give time markers in our readings, the time markers I find, and this is my mindfulness approach, the time markers are less important in that they, like tune us into it's going to happen in this month and more important they're kind, I, I kind of come to think of this as a forecast like a weather forecast and not like fortune telling right there is a, a, a horizon of the future but just like a meteorologist will be able to look at how the weather system is is playing out right now where there's low pressure and high pressure and cold fronts and warm fronts whatever and say ah, in the next 10 days this is where we're going. That's how the tarot works with time. It's giving us a picture of this moment as it is in movement because everything is always in movement. And that allows us to see where we're heading, right? So how is that helpful? In many ways, um, you know, like that year, 2017, I think it was, that year was super helpful, not just because, you know, I, in, I spent all of June preparing for disaster. <laughs> I didn't know I was preparing, but I was trying to wrap my mind around what the tower meant. So when July came around and the shit hit the fan big time in a bunch of different ways, I kind of was ready for the message of how is this calamity actually grace? How is this tower with its uh, depiction of things falling apart and what's on top falling down to the ground. How is that truly an image of heaven, the heavens above meeting the earth? How is that an image of grace? So I was prepared, but I think even more profoundly, the more and more I work with um, this time-oriented uh, spread, the tower, uh, the wheel of life spread, uh, the more I think that what was really valuable is that I came to a much deeper understanding of this one archetype, the tower, in all of its different facets. So the Wheel of Life spread because we're continually saying, okay, how is, how is this month a tower month? What is the tower saying to me right now? What is my moment right now saying to the tower? Because we're always reading the card of the month and the hub card for the year in terms of the whole movement of our life right here and now. This is a spread, this is a kind of work that just deepens our appreciation of the archetypes behind tarot. 
So more and more I'm thinking that these kinds of spreads that have a temporal dimension built into them that are really explicitly trying to help me understand this moment now and this moment in the future and the moment thereafter, what they really are helping me understand are the archetypes of tarot. I become a better tarot reader for working with the Wheel of Life spread. Now, so that's one of the ways I'm thinking about the month cards, right? I'm thinking about how they help me lean into the movement of my life and kind of see how the weather systems move and then also help me see in more detail and more deep uh, awareness what the archetypes of those cards are. The hub card, the central card, so in other kind of wheel or um, year oriented year ahead kind of spreads wheel of life spreads year ahead spreads there's almost always a theme of the year card or a card of the year and some of you do other kind of formulas to figure out what your card of the year is this is a very common way to work with tara so you say okay this year is my hermit year or whatever the hub card which is a theme for the year card but it's also what's at the center of the wheel, right? It's it's at the center of the mandala that the wheel of life is. A mandala is, you know, is typically a figure that's in the form of a circle. The word mandala is just Sanskrit for circle. Um, and it is a map. It is a sacred map of the cosmos, of the human psyche, of this period in time, of all time, of eternity. You know, it's a it's a it's a snapshot, right? It's a map that captures the whole terrain. And at the center of the map, the centerpiece is the hub card. So in a way, uh, part of the work that I'm doing with the Wheel of Life is to think all along the way, how is my hub card uh, being informed by my month cards, by my day-to-day -day, uh, passage of the year, um, and how are those, uh, how is the hub card informing my month card. So I'm, I'm continually reading back and forth between the hub card and the month card. And typically, a practice that I think is incredibly useful, and I often fall off of this practice like in April, like four months into the year, and each year I'm like, oh, I'm gonna be really good about this. But a practice that I at least start the year doing really good and strong is by doing a, a reading first and foremost with my hub card and my card of the month on the first day of the new month. So I think to myself, okay, in 2024, my hub card is the emperor. My January card, whoops, my January card, and this is from the Astara Tarot for uh, this year, for 2024, is the sun. So I think about what it is about the emperor that helps me understand the sun and what it is about the sun that helps me understand the emperor and how to both help me lean in to the new year and into this moment right here and right now. So first of all, the emperor, the card of control, the card of stability, the card of structure, the fourth of the major arcana, the fourth trump, this card that uh, delineates fourness so strongly, everything that the four comes to mean, stability, support, um, creating a world, right? This emperor who I, you know, my burning man, <laughs> my hipster, sexy burning man, ram, Aries, god, emperor here, um, not exactly, this doesn't quite speak to maybe to my middle-aged demographic, but I mean, he's hot, that's good. Um, but one of the things about him is I love how the these glyphs, this uh, tattooing, uh, it, you know, it's like he's creating meaning in his very skin, like structure is like carved into his skin. He's carrying the world right on his surface. It's, it's like, how do I make sense of everything, you know? And that yearning to build meaning, to build a world, um, that's what's behind, I think, for me, the, at least at this point in my exploration of this card this year, uh, that's what's behind the emperor's, the archetype of the emperor, you know? How, how do I craft a world, build a world that's full of meaning? How do I create borders and boundaries and structure? Uh, how do I build worlds? 
and build worlds with an eye toward the future. I love that he's sort of looking up, looking out with this kind of future casting. Um, but I don't fully understand. I don't I mean, yeah, I don't know, because in some ways these look like white tattoos. On, on the other hand, this white on his skin looks just like the white border, so it looks a little bit superficial. Um, I'm wondering how deep the Emperor's commitment is to the structure that he builds into the world. Does he really take it in? Does he really take up the responsibility for that structure that he constructs? Um, where does his leadership come from? These are some of the questions that I have about the Emperor and my own step, my own emperorness. you know? I've said before that using the kind of formula for uh, soul cards that Mary Greer first pioneered back in the 80s, the Emperor is my soul card. Yeah, so, yeah, SD Emperor. I mean, I like to build things, I like to control things, I like stability, I like order, order, order. Um, when I'm traveling, the minute I get to a hotel or, you know, staying in someone's house, I will unpack and put things away. I will nest. And my nesting isn't so much about, like, you know, being a homebody. It's like, I've got to create my world, right? And so I get it. Who is this guy, though? Now, my January card is the sun. And I've often really um, had difficulties with the sun card because... In traditional kind of metaphysics, the sun is, um, like Western metaphysics, the sun is often understood to be male, where the moon is female, and the sun is like truth, and clarity, and understanding, and goodness, and the moon is dark, and it's wavering, and it's, you know, menstrual, literally, right? It's like, you know, it's that, that, that on-again, off-again, untrustworthy, feminine, dark, bloody energy. And I thought, okay, this is fucked up. This is misogynistic. The sun is coded good. The moon is coded kind of lesser than. So I've had issues with the sun card. But here in the Austero Tarot, well, first of all, the sun is female. It's a female figure. Second of all, she's mostly in shadow, which to me brings forward what's problematic about the sun card, right? Um, that the sun card may seem like it's all about creating clarity and openness and vision and insight, but inevitably things are in shadow. We can't see the whole world all at once. But I'm also getting this card while I'm here in Mexico. And the thing that has been probably in so many ways beyond um, like learning Spanish and meeting, uh, meeting Oaxaqueños and kind of getting a little bit of a taste as a gringa of the culture here and the art, oh my God, the art here, the graphic art. Um, which actually this emperor also reminds me of because everything is drawn upon here. There are murals everywhere. There's lots of tattoo parlors, lots of tattooing. Graphic arts are like huge here. Um, but above and beyond those aspects of Oaxaqueño culture, oh, and did I mention the food? There's the food too. Um, it's the sun. Oh my God. The sun, I mean, we're 5,000 feet elevated. It's, you know, it's Mexico, so it's it's warm and sunny, but we're, we're so close to the sun, it feels like. And the sun is so bright. And my I feel like every pore of my body just soaking in sunlight. You know, my Pacific Northwest, <laughs> like vitamin D deficient self, just going, just sucking it in like a, a great big sunflower, you know? and that sense of the power of the sun and, and the relentlessness of the sun, the kind of the brutality of it, the way in which the sun is God, not, not a Christian God, a much, like, if I can say it this way, a much older God than the Judeo-Christian God. It's like the oldest God. Okay, there's the moon <laughs> and there's the earth. But just that power, that power of the sun to heal, to bathe, to uh, burn, um, that it is beyond human capacity to understand, that it's a deep, deep mystery. I feel like I've really opened into the mystery of the sun while I've been here. Like I'm not, I haven't figured out the mystery. I've actually just apprehended that there is a mystery of the sun that's every bit as potent as the mystery that I was sort of already aware of, of the moon, of darkness, of shadow, of reflection. 
So I feel in the presence of the mystery of the sun. So this is how my January card is starting out. It's, it's awakening me to the mystery of light, of the burning light. In Buddhism, we might talk about um, the Buddha of infinite light, Varachana Buddha, Lochana Buddha, um, the sort of the, the, the infinite lum, illumination, everything burning all at once, everything down. It's all light all the way down. Um, so that even the darkness, even the shadow burns. That's why I feel like at a spiritual level, I've been encountering this month. I don't know if this makes any sense, guys. Um, but thank you for thank you for being here as I'm articulating it. And then this hub card, right? Okay, so how do these speak to each other? So it's like, okay, well, what what of the kind of traditional building stability power of the emperor goes beyond what the emperor understands? How is the sun part of what gives the emperor power? And at what point does the emperor's power need to yield to what cannot be understood. So I've been starting the year really strong with a sense of deep respect, uh, deep uncynical respect for the power of the sun and maybe of the divine masculine. I mean, maybe that's what's at stake for me, that it's much easier for me to connect with the divine feminine and the dark feminine, but I've had to confront in myself and in the world and in the cosmos, the power of the divine masculine. Maybe that's it. I don't know, there's something here. Uh, and it's something about gender, that's for sure. So, all this to say, I don't know what this means, but this is the investigation that the Wheel of Life affords. And thinking about the hub card as an opening each month, each moment into um, that which the, the month card is trying to articulate, articulate outward to the rest of my life. So the continuity this year is going to be the emperor and the question, I think, of power and world building and every step along the way. How does that get nuanced out each month, each moment by each card? Okay. I think I'm going to stop there. I don't know if this is useful or helpful, but I thank you all for listening. And, you know, as always, I thank you for your practice. I thank you for, for being there. It's such an endless source of joy and pleasure. Okay, toodaloo. More Anand.